And I now give the floor to the representative of Armenia. Mr. President, we thank the Presidency of the United Kingdom for convening the open debate on the theme of children and armed conflict. We appreciate the comprehensive presentation by the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict, Ms. Virginia Gamba, Deputy Executive Director of UNICEF and the Civil Society Briefer. Armenia emphasizes the critical importance of upholding the goals, objectives, and principles enshrined in the Safe School Declaration, the Paris Principles, and the Vancouver Principles to promote and protect the rights of all children, in particular those residing in conflict areas and to prevent grave violations of children's rights. The Secretary General's report on children and armed conflict reveals a growing number of challenges faced by children as multidimensional conflicts, including across regions, continue to have adverse impact on the lives of civilians for the reporting period of 2022. The report demonstrates that the monitoring and verification of grave violations remains extremely challenging including owing to excess constraints, which results in the underreporting of such violations. Underreporting is a major challenge that can lead to bias and inadequate response enabling the perpetration of further violations, including in our own region. In September 2022, Azerbaijan conducted an armed attack against the territorial integrity of Armenia exposing a number of villages and towns deep inside Armenia to massive shelling by heavy artillery and UAVs. Azerbaijan's premeditated criminal actions violated the right to education of 25,000 children that were displaced from Gekharkunik, Vyazor, and Sunik provinces. In Nagorno-Karabakh, since 12 December 2022, the civilian population have become victim of an inhumane blockade by Azerbaijan the imposition of which has severely affected the rights and livelihoods of those most vulnerable, the children. As we speak, the ongoing blockade of the Latching Corridor, in violation of the existing legal obligations and the order of International Court of Justice, continues to endanger the lives of innocent people in Nagorno-Karabakh. For almost seven months now, families with children have been suffering from critical shortages of essential goods, including food, fuel, and medical supplies. The humanitarian situation is further exacerbated by complete disruption of gas and electricity. 118 schools had to suspend their activities due to weather conditions depriving 20,000 children of their right to education including early education, with preschools no longer operational due to food insecurities affecting more than 6,800 children. Provision of health services has been severely disrupted with acute lack of antibiotics and other types of medications, leaving children sus susceptible to otherwise easily treatable diseases, while hundreds of newborns are experiencing nutritional problems exacerbated by the ongoing shortage of infant formula. On 22 February, the International Court of Justice issued order on, on the indication of provisional measures demanding that Azerbaijan, and I quote, shall take all measures at its disposal to ensure an impeded movement of persons, vehicles, and cargo along the latching corridor in both directions, unquote. To this day, Azerbaijan has failed to ensure compliance with the legally binding order of the court. Mr. President, Azerbaijan's denial of safe and unimpeded humanitarian access of the UN agencies to Nagorno-Karabakh undermines comprehensive assessment of the humanitarian protection, early recovery needs, and human rights situation of the population to ensure the protection of the rights of children and their access to inclusive and quality education, health care, and social services. As the leading advocate of the United Nations for the protection of the children affected by armed conflict, Special Representative of the Secretary General has a central role to play in raising awareness on the need to increase efforts to protect children whose inalienable rights are under brutal attack. The intentional disruption of the corridor, which has left 30,000 children and their families besieged, constitutes a violation of, massive, of a massive scope and gravity and we call on Special Representative to use her important mandate to monitor the situation and to take efforts for humanitarian access in order to avoid further deterioration of the conditions affecting the lives of children in Nagorno-Karabakh. 
Mr. President, the United Nations, its humanitarian arm, OCHA, as well as SRHG for Children and Armed Conflict, and this very council have a distinct responsibility to prevent grave violations and to safeguard the physical security of children whose rights and safety must be respected and protected at all times in all parts of the world, including in Nagorno-Karabakh. I thank you.